That is good. Um, well, God bless you. My name is Ronald G. Hurston Sr. This is your first time here being a part of the broadcast. I want to thank God for you being a part of the broadcast today. Again, um, if this is your first time uh, being a part of the broadcast, uh, my name is Ronald G. Hurston Sr. And the name of our ministry is Kingdom Faith International Christian Center, where we're providing knowledge to build a people with a heart after God. So I hope and pray that you are uh, blessed and highly favored and that you're looking forward to hearing a word of faith today that will encourage you in your walk in your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I'm excited. I hope you're excited. And um, uh, we just want to thank God for all the members of Kingdom Faith International Christian Center and also those who have been partnering with us in ministry and also those who have been following us. Uh, we just appreciate you guys. Uh, we do love you. We do Thank God for you uh, being a part of the broadcast and uh, thanking God for us learning together and learning how to uh, adjust and do the things that are necessary that we can learn how to walk by faith and not by sight. And it is a process. Uh, it's not something that's just learned overnight. It's something that we do day by day. And uh, we're just appreciative of you being a part of the broadcast. So if you can, I want you to get your Bibles and uh, something to jot down some information on it. You might want to do that so that you can look at uh the rest of this week because we need to take the time to overview i mean go over and review some of the things that we are talking about that can help you in terms of what god is speaking and saying to you uh and i believe he's speaking to all of us in this hour so again uh we just thank god for what god is doing in your life i do want to uh continue to encourage you guys thank you for your financial support for us to get this word out we need to get this word out for people to hear because uh, the bible is true when it says faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we need a word, uh, a word from God's word from the Bible that would help us so we can be in position to receive what he has for us in this life as well as the next. So we again, we're going to thank you guys for uh, financially, for your financial support. Thank you for going to uh, www.kficc.com and that's where you can actually uh, hit the donate button and also put in whatever it is God puts in your heart that you need to do to be responsible in terms of your giving and supporting the ministry. Again, we thank you for that, and we're appreciative for you doing that in Jesus' name. Also, we just want to say thank you so much for um, your prayers also, because we do need your prayers. Uh, don't forget that when you do go to the web website that you can look for uh, the video button, and it has some other messages that we ministered that can help you also. If you scroll through there, you can kind of this uh, in your own leisure and you can just uh, hit a button and uh, watch a video and get some information. Something will help feed you. Amen. Um, so again, we just want to thank God. Thank God for your prayers also. We do appreciate that. And thank you for your comments. Those who have been taking the time to give us a thumbs up or even giving us in the comment session, comment se section to let us know that you're there online. Uh, I don't want to get to pe mention people's names, but I do see your comments coming up. So I'm trying to stay focused and and uh, give you what I believe God is saying that we should give you today in Jesus' name. So I'm going to pray, and I hope you got your Bibles by now or your electronic devices, whatever you use. Hope you got a cup of coffee, a cup of hot chocolate, a cup of milk, whatever it is that you drink, or a cup of water. And uh, we're going to get right into the Word of Faith today. And I'm just so excited about what God is saying and doing in your life and what he's doing in my life also. So I hope you had a great week. So let me just pray now. And while I'm praying, I'm going to also insert praying for some people who are listening today who just need prayer. Uh, prayer is an avenue that we use in our humility and submission to God that opens the door for him to work on our behalf. The Bible said we have not because we ask not. But we've also been trained in the word of God that when we ask, we ask in Jesus' name. So let's pray. Father, I thank you for those who are listening today. I pray in Jesus' name that you begin to survey those who need help. And whatever support they need, whether it's spiritually, financially, mentally, uh, uh, whatever it may be, God, I ask that you would uh, uh, move on their behalf and set some things in order that would help them, amen, be relieved from any pressure that's keeping them from walking in relationship with you. So we bind the enemy and all his devices that would have no, no, uh, uh, no foothold on to those who are trusting and relying upon you. This we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Bless the message for today, God. Give us a word that will help us in our walk and our relationship, even with you and also with one another. Uh, help us have a word that want to grow and get beyond the natural laws of, of governing, but being governed by your spirit 
and we welcome the ministry of the holy angels to take even now this word and we yield ourselves to the ministry of the holy spirit take this vessel cut use it for your glory and lord we forever give you the glory the honor and the praise this we pray in jesus name and everybody should say amen all right so what we're going to do we're going to talk about today is realign realigning one's focus last week we were talking about being refreshed so this kind of all kind of ties together somewhat because it's something that we have to do uh, a lot of times uh, we hear a word about what God is doing for us, and that's a good thing to hear. But sometimes we need to hear our response in terms of what we need to do in terms of what God is doing for us. There's some things that we need to do that is our responsibility. So today we're going to be talking about realigning one's focus. Realigning one's focus. And uh, this word align, uh, the word aligned, uh, suggests that there is an um, uh, a orderly arrangement. When you look at the word align, A-L-I-G-N, uh, the word alignment suggests um, that um, there's something, you know, there's something uh, out of order. And it's not in a, uh, a negative way, but a, by, by way of neglect or lack of understanding. So sometimes it's not in a negative way, but sometimes it's in a way of neglect or uh, lack of understanding. Hence the word rely, to rely that a, that's a person uh, that, that still has time to recover. We have time to recover or set some things what we call in order. Now in believers, as believers of Jesus Christ, uh, we have a responsibility to put God first in and over and through our lives. In other words, when we accept him as our Lord and Savior, we're now devoting our our life unto him. He gave his life for us, so now we're devoting our life back unto him and trying to learn how to do things what his way. So that's our responsibility. So today we're going to be talking about, again, relying, realigning one's focus. Now, I don't know about you, but when you're walking with God and walking by faith, it is a challenge. It's a challenge because we're trying to over, overcome our old way of living and trying to live by a word of faith or word of promise. Um, there are times uh, that things that that sometimes we say, but we don't practice. Let me say that again. There's sometimes as believers, we, we love confessing things, and confessing is good, but there's some confessions should line up with your actions. So sometimes we say some things that we don't practice, the word practice, the word practice. And practice is a good word for that word in terms of being a disciple. Because a disciple is about practicing, learning, learning how to do things from a different way, a different perspective, so we can begin to move in the light of what God has for us as we learn how to walk and also receive the things by faith. Um, Sometimes uh, what happens is, is that uh, God knows that sometimes that through this, we have been given what we call grace. And sometimes this grace, what can happen is we can recover. We can recover sometime uh, things that have been lost. Uh, so the grace of God is upon us to recover. Sometimes the grace of God in that because we don't get it quite right and we uh, yield and lead to our fleshly ways and then we are able to repent. And grace is there to help us to recover so we can learn from our mistakes and also do something different. So uh, most people don't know, or did you know, uh, that this word re, R-E, is a word. Did you know that R-E is a word? It is a word. And it's a powerful word. And the word R-E means to turn. So we're talking about realigning one's focus. So we need to turn. So, And it's a self-examination that we do as believers. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 13 and 5, it says, examine yourself, whether you be in the faith. It says, prove your own self, whether Jesus Christ be in you, except you be a reprobated or have a, a reprobated mind. So examining oneself is where we take evaluations and see if there's something that needs to be realigned in terms of our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I do that periodically. I need to check and make sure that my focus is in the right direction. And if it's not, then we need to realign it so we don't miss out on being in the right position that God has for us. Now, with that being said, sometimes this word re is used in the Bible. Uh, this word re is as a word, I said the word re, it simply means uh, to turn. 
Uh, also, you find out sometimes this word re re is uh, used as a prefix to a word, a prefix to a word. Uh, so the Bible, some some of these words are used in the Bible, such as uh, repent, uh, renew, uh, revive, uh, reconcile. It has the word R-E in the front of it, so it's a prefix. Remember that uh, the statement I mentioned earlier that as believers, uh, we have the responsibility to God the Father by putting him first in rank, first in power, and first in authority. Let me say that again because a lot of times this is what it's all about. Our life is living under the kingdom of God through the Lord Jesus Christ, and because of that, now we're disciples of being disciples of the kingdom of God, being ruled and worked not only in us, but upon us and around us and also through us. So again, it's our responsibility because that's our choice. And that choice has to be uh, revisited sometime because sometimes we get off track. So again, the responsibility uh, is, is to God the Father, putting him what? First in rank, first in power, and first in authority when it comes to our lives. When it comes to our lives and it's a great joy in that when we know we have the authority to make that choice and to stick with that now the challenge for us uh is to maintain the focus of our priorities concerning our relationship that we have with jesus christ that's where the challenge is we're going to give you some scriptures in just a minute that i think that are very important to remind us of this very statement that i'm talking about realigning one's focus uh, however, over time, we can change that arrangement uh, due to pressure and mismanagement. The enemy likes to pressure us so we can get out of alignment with God. Uh, our job is to fight the good fight of faith to stay in position so he doesn't change us from our position of our conviction and even our, our, our belief that God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man he should repent. Therefore, whatever we're going through, it has a purpose tied to it. And in that purpose has a lot to do with us choosing to hold fast to what God has told us that we need to do in terms of our conduct, our attitude, our behavior, even in terms of him doing things for us that we know we can't do for ourselves. Now, we must always remember these, these scriptures. Now, we used to probably say, well, where is the word? I've already been talking about the word. But I want to give you a, a basically a, a, a overview of what we're going to be talking about, realigning one's focus. And the purpose of that is that sometime through neglect or mismanagement, we get our priorities out of order. The Bible talks about in Matthew 6 and 33, it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all these other things. He said, then it will be added unto us. So again, it's about putting things in the proper alignment. So the first scripture we're going to look at is Hebrews chapter number 12 and verses 1 and 2. Let's go to Hebrews chapter number 12 and verses one and verse number two. So Hebrews, and that's where we're going, the book of Hebrews, chapter number 12, uh, and then we're going to go verses one and two. So Hebrews chapter number 12, and it says here, we'll read this out of the Amplified Bible or Amplified Version, and uh, it says here, mm hmm, He said, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who are born testimony to the truth. Now, it talks about believers here and that people are witnessing our confession, our walk, and also not only that, but our behavior. It says, let us strip off and throw aside every encumbrancing, unnecessary weight that sin which so readily is clean to and entangled us and let us run with patience and endurance and steady and active persistence the appointment or course of the race that is set before us so the christian walk is in this metaphor is like a race it's like a race so it's like a race this is what this is talking about here and when you uh have a race uh on a field or in in a, a auditorium there are witnesses there are people there to see you run so there are people actually walk looking at you and i in terms of our walk and our relationship in this race or this christian walk is is by faith and i can't say that enough because a lot of things people understand that we're going to begin with faith but we're going to end with faith also so faith is very important because there's two types of faith you probably heard me say that before 
it needs to be said again because some people don't get the understanding of that and that is that God's faith starts with a promise our faith starts with a choice so we choose to believe what God's promise says about us and then therefore we begin to get in position with alignment for retraining and relearning so we learn how to do things his way and not our way the next verse says looking away from all that will distract to Jesus that's a powerful point because it says who is the leader and the source of your faith then it says giving the first incentive for our belief and it says is also the finisher bringing it to maturity and perfection it said he for the joy of obtaining the prize that was set before him endured of the cross despising and ignoring the shame and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God praise be to God he is sitting on the right hand interceding for us that we finish our race in terms of our relationship and the walk in relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ so this is powerful when you look at this so this is really talking about our focus our focus and our aim is Jesus there shouldn't be anything else it should be Jesus in terms of what he preached what he preached was the kingdom he didn't preach church he preached kingdom and he talked about a lifestyle in the kingdom of God that you and I can possess now and even to, to and even when he comes back and hereafter glory to God so then it talks about our focus is being what on the Savior our Savior and the Lord Jesus him being Lord and Savior over our lives you need to say that with me Jesus is not only my Savior but he is my Lord over my life in other words he takes care of us he takes care of those who put their trust in him so again that trust means we not give part of our lives to him we give all of our lives to them in terms of us moving forward in that understanding to vacate our will to allow his will to be done in us and through us and this is what he's after and it's a place of he says here our faith brought to a place of what maturity now as i've said before sometimes walking by faith is not easy because we're learning how to live in this world but being governed by the kingdom of god but which is a spiritual kingdom that's in this world also so again as we move forward you have to understand that so we are we are we have a definite focus and that focus is who jesus looking into jesus it says in the king james who is the author and the finisher of your faith in other words i have to keep my mind as they say the bible says whose mind is stayed upon him he keeps them in perfect peace but it's our responsibility to make sure that our alignment is still into that right alignment in terms of our focus and that focus is what Jesus, our aim is Jesus. The aim is to simply that we have a clear, what we call uh, uh, eagerness. I have a clear eagerness and a place to apprehend um, or to embrace the reality of that truth that Jesus is not only in me, but he wants to live through me also through the fruit of the Holy Spirit in which he's given us as believers. Paul kind of picked that up, and let's turn over to Philippians chapter number three, because Philippians, Paul kind of describes it a, a little differently. And I'm going to read one verse. All of this is good, but we're going to look at Philippians chapter number three and verse number 10. I'm going to read this out of the 10th verse, because again, when we talk about uh, readjusting, I mean, realigning one's focus is that we have to make sure that it's all about Jesus. It's all about what Jesus has done, what he's doing in you now, what he's requiring of you in terms of your uh, uh, things that he's yet believing. I mean, we're believing him for and things he needs to do for us as we live for him and not live for ourselves. But here Paul talks about the same thing when he talks about his aim and his, uh, his uh, focus. And it says here that he had an eagerness for something. And I'm going to talk about this in a minute because I, uh, not only we have an eager, eagerness to go to heaven, but we need to have an eagerness that we share something that Jesus has that we now can possess. It says here in the 10th verse, for my determination, this is Philippians chapter 3, verse number 10 in the Amplified, for my, determin for my determined purpose is that I may know him. Now you're talking about relationship. Some people have heard about Jesus, but to know him is to is to love him glory to god and to love him 
simply means we obey him. And to obey him means now we understand it's not my will, but it's his will being done. Amen. So then it says here, know him and that I that I may progressively. Now he talks about how it's going to move from being uh, babes in Christ to a place to uh, children in Christ, to the place now to being mature in Christ as an adult. So he's talking about even that I may progressively become more deeply, intimately acquainted with him. Hmm. My God. Paul, he, he's talking about getting deeper now, getting deeper. Amen. So part of the realignment and focus is so we stay focused with understanding what the purpose is in terms of you being saved and what God requires for you after you get saved, and then what he requires for you after that, because God is always requiring something because the requirement is tied to your faith and obedience and submission to his word. And on top of that, there's a reward come because God rewards you because of you uh, doing things his way and not your way. It says here, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person. Glory to God. It says the wonders of his person, of his person, more strongly and more clearly, clearly, and that I may in the same way, I mean, the same is it that I, that I may in that same way come to the, come to know the power, it says here, the power outflowing from his resurrection. Mm. That power is transforming power. I mean, it has the power to transform you inside and out. <laughs> Glory to God. My God, that power is designed to transform, to, to bring you from one, from light to, from darkness to light, from, from ignorance to knowledge. It's, it's designed to move you, move you, even though you're not moving physically, but something's moving in you inwardly. Glory to God. Then it says here, which exerts uh, over the believer. I like the scripture where it says over, I think it's over in the first John uh, 1 and 12. It says that many that had received him, then he gave you power, authority, privilege, and right to become the sons of God. God wants to cast forth his behavior trait through you, through the Holy Spirit that has you what we call uh, uh, the fruits of the spirit can be produced through you, not you doing it, by you yielding to the power of God that's inside of you that tells you tells you to move in a certain direction as we yield and to his voice and yield to his commandments working in our life. Then he says that, that I may share in his suffering to be continually transformed. He said to be continually transformed. I like that because transform means that there's power involved. Uh, you can't change yourself, but God has the power to change you. And not only that he changes you, but he keeps changing you. And then he changes you more and more and more. And he's making you come more in tune with what he desires to do in and through you if we realign our focus of putting him first in rank, first in power, and first in authority over our life. We don't want to lose that because when you lose that, you disconnect with the power that's able to transform you. And then you're in a place where we're stuck, complaining, always looking at the past, always judging others, never really, never really moving to the place of understanding that power exists for all believers so God can transform us into, it says here, amen. And that why it needs to transform, because what? That I may share his suffering to be continued with transform in spirit, it says here, into his likeness, into his likeness, even into his death, in the hope, in that hope, in that hope. Remember, it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. And that hope is expectation for God's power being revealed and manifested before we leave the earth. We want to exist, my God. We want to experience the power of God working in our lives because what is given unto us, as I said, the scripture and so over first, I mean, uh, the Gospel of John 1 and 12, to as many as received them, then he gave you power, authority, and privilege and right to become the sons of God. So it's a process of learning. It's a process of adjusting and renewing the mind. Uh, it's a process of letting go of one's own will to let his will be done. It's a process of vacating.
getting our feelings and going to what the word says because the word can override how we feel. And the word can even adjust our feelings from moving from sadness to happiness to joyfulness. All that is done through the word of faith. The other scripture you want to look at is a powerful scripture that's kind of tied to what we're talking about today because rare line one is focused, as you have to remember, I mean, I made that that uh, uh, said earlier that the word real line suggests that something is what is out of order, out of order. Sometimes our, our mindsets are out of order because we're not, we put ourselves first. Sometimes we can put our children first. Someone can put our jobs first. Someone can put our, 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 our uh, our hobbies first. Sometimes we put a lot of things first, but we want to make sure that we all those things I just mentioned, we want them behind Jesus. We want Jesus to be first, and then my job, and then my family, da 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 da. Glory to God. Because with that, then I'm tied to the power that Paul was talking about. Because not only that we want to rely on one, rely realigning one's focus is because the purpose of that is that we want to make sure that we know Him and in the power of his might, and the fellowship of his resurrection, being made conformable unto his death. In other words, we want the transforming power not to start in us and not complete the journey that needs to be done in and through us through a process of us always learning how to make sure that our focus and our aim is still on Jesus, regardless. Even if we don't have the ability to do things that we're accustomed to do day by day, it's still I'm looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finish of my faith. He gave me the faith. Scripture is Hebrews chapter number 10. We're going to go to Hebrews chapter number 10. That's where we're going now. And we're going to look at verse number 35 through 39. I'm going to read this out of the Amplified also. So again, it's Hebrews chapter number 10 is where we're going. Hebrews 10. I hope you get something out of this today to encourage you. Amen. So Hebrews 10, 35 uh, through, it says here, 39. And let's listen to what the word of faith has to say to us uh, concerning our, our race, concerning our Christian walk, concerning our journey, concerning our day by day concerning and learning how to keep the priorities right in our life so we can put him first in rank, first in power, first in authority, so we can begin to experience the power of God working not only in us, but upon us and around us and through us. I mean, I got some stories. I know some of you got some stories about how the power of God manifests himself in such a way that it was just astonishing. Paul said it's wonders of his person, the wonders of his attributes of who he is, and not so much that when we get to heaven, but right now, glory to God. So here it says here, and it says in Hebrews chapter number 10, verse number 30, 35, I'm reading this out of the Amplified, Hebrews 10 and 35, and it says, do not, therefore, fling away from your fearless confidence, for it carries a great and glorious compensation, compensation, compensation of reward. It reads a little different in the... Uh, King James, it says, cast not therefore away your confidence, which is the great recompense and reward. Now, the, now, you have to understand that your confidence is tied to your faith. You're talking about your confidence, not Jesus' confidence, not God the Father's confidence, your confidence. Your level of confidence is due to the part of you believing what God's promises says for you are yea and amen. They're not when I get to heaven. Some people just have enough faith to believe that it's all about getting to heaven. And, and, and you know what? That's a part of the process, but that's not all to it. And God needs to help us in this life. And in this life, he knows he's made us promises. That's where the promises are tied to his faith. His faith starts with a promise. Our faith starts with the confidence. Are you confident enough to believe that God is not going to allow you to be homeless? And you have to believe that he will supply your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And if we're just looking for our needs to be met without the relationship, then we got a problem because something is being mismanaged or there's a misalignment because God's more concerned about you first before he can do anything else for you. He needs you to be subject to his will. 
to his authority, to his power, being first in rank, first in power, first in authority, and you're not trying to play God and try to use him as a, a slot machine to get what you want so you can stay in your own self-will. No, 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 no. We're talking about those who are totally submitted to God and have made him their Lord and their Savior through practice and learning how to realign themselves on a day-to-day -day basis so we can make sure that he's first in rank, first in power, first in authority, and that we don't forget that. And because we live by that standard alone, he has made obligations through the word of faith that he will supply our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We don't have to go it alone. We go it through our relationship with Jesus Christ. And there's benefits that God has for us, not so much when we get to heaven. I say this a lot. The benefits are tied to us living now and if also that which is come. Even Jesus said, the thief come to steal, kill, and destroy, but I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. In other words, God says, even in 1 Timothy 4 and 8, it says physical training is of some value, but spiritual training is valuable for everything and holds the promise of this life and the life which is to come. So the confidence in that God is not a man that he should lie and what God promised he will bring it to pass if you keep the relationship right with him. And even if I choose to make or mismanage that and get out of alignment, grace is still there for me to repent, to get him back first in rank, first in power, first in authority in my life. And then it's, that channel is open for him to do what he needs to do in life. You need to say amen up in here today. Glory to God. All right. So let's go a little bit further in Amplified. 36 verse. For you need to be, you need, for you need, for you have need of steadfast patience. I like this. I like this. Because when Paul talked about in Hebrews chapter number 12, he talks about us being in a race or a Christian race. He's talking about a marathon. He's not talking about a sprint where you just run 50 yards and you're done or run 100 yards and you're done or the four by 40. You know, he's talking about a marathon where you it's going to take time. So it takes a, a, a steadfastness and patience. You can't be in a hurry to finish what God has started in you. <laughs> you can't be in a hurry to finish what God has started in you. And what is in you is not to take you to a location or to a place of promise that you want to arrive in. He wants to teach you how to walk through the journey of life, how to live life, how to live life his way, dealing with the kids, dealing with the job, dealing with, with, with anything you need to deal with in life. He's there to help us be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path to redirect our footsteps so we can be overcomers as we walk through this thing called life. And then when we come out the end of our life, that he gives us the faith to transition from this life to the next life. Glory to God in the highest. We're talking about something here. Steadfast patience and endurance. And endurance and endurance and endurance. That's what we're talking about today. Realign one's faith, one realigning one's focus. Remember, I said before, sometimes this is this is neglected uh because of uh uh, uh it's a word of neglect. It's not that we did something wrong, but we either uh, we, we, we neglect to do it because of pressure. Uh, because like I said before, we're too strapped in our feelings. So I don't feel like, I don't feel like doing Jesus today. What kind of stuff is that? What kind of, well, when the Bible said we don't feel Jesus, we, we, it's by faith and faith has to deal with our confidence, a choice, a confidence, our confession and our obedience. Let's go a little bit further. It says that, that you, your patience and endurance so that you may be perfectly, fully accomplished with the will of God and thus receive and carry and enjoy the full what is promised. There are some promises that God said he can't fulfill unless we stay in relationship with him. Mm -hmm. We have to stay in relationship with him because by, it comes by way of the relationship through him to us, how we get the promise. And if you broke relationship with God, because the priority now is not to put not to put him first in rank, not to put him first in power, not to put him first in authority, but to put something else there, whether it's husband, wife, it doesn't matter whatever it is. But once you put that there, then you've lost your focus. You're not looking to the one who's able to do for you what you can't do for yourself. 
But praise be to God, as I said before, we can recover from that place when we understand, you know what, I need to put him first and rank Jesus, first and rank, first in power, and first in authority, and his word, amen, in, in that alignment also in Jesus' name. So it says here, it says, for a little while, in the 37th verse, for a little while, and for a very little while, it says, the coming one, and the will come, and he will not de delay. It talks about the second coming of Jesus Christ. And people are saying, well, we've been saying that for over 2,000 years, and he hasn't came yet. You know, and he, you know, doesn't matter. He's not, he's coming in his own timing. And we don't want him to come too soon. I got some loved ones that yet need to be saved. I need some people, amen, who are backslidden and need to come back to God and put him first in rank and first in power and first in authority and get their lives right and allow the power of God to hit their lives, to get things out of their lives that don't belong there because it's not a part of God's plan for their life. And therefore, it's a disruption in their own life because they're what operating in a place of what caused confusion. And they don't have the peace of God ruling over them. So therefore, the grace is still here upon the earth, giving us time to get our priorities right, making sure our alignment, amen, that we're aligned, one and one's focused, and that Jesus is first in rank, first in power, and first in authority. And we don't move from that position because we don't cast away our confidence because we know that he's doing something in that. Let's move a little further. The 38th verse says here, but the just shall live by faith. An intellectual knowledge of God's word, not by feeling, not by feeling, but having a knowledge of what God's word says about you. You are the child of the king. Glory to God. Yes, you got born and saved, born again in a natural church or whatever the church local name was on the side of the building, on the front of the building. I don't care what it says, but the bottom line, it wasn't about that. It was about Jesus, who was first in rank first in power and first in authority. He made it all happen. Therefore, the just shall live by faith, by the righteous service shall live by his conviction, respecting man's relationship, it says here, to God and, demi and divine things. I don't have a lot of time, but I should like to eat that up. Glory to God. Then it says here, and by holy fervor, born of faith, it says, conjoined with it, and if we draw back, and shrink in fear, my soul shall have no delight or pleasure in him. So it talks about we have a choice to either can stay steadfast with the Lord, being first in rank, first in power, first in authority, or somewhere along the line, after 10 years we've been doing that, something happens to get us, amen, off track. And then what we do is not walk by faith anymore. We, we now put our feelings on high priority and we now governed by what we feel, what we think and what other people say. And then therefore we walk away. He said he will not be pleased with those who determined to take that path. Glory to God. But the Bible says that but in the next verse, it tells, tells us, but our way is not of those who draw back to eternal misery or perdition and an utter utterly destroyed, but we are those who believe, who cleave to, who trust in and rely on God through Jesus Christ, the Messiah, by faith and preserving our soul. My God. In other words, Paul said, I'm, there have been some that started out with me, but they chose not to stay in this pathway of faith and relationship with the Lord. They chose to go backwards in terms of their own priorities and not putting him first in rank and first in power and first in authority. So he's saying, we're not going to basically give up on it. We'll pray for them that God will give them a change of heart and change of mind that they will use this word R-E and tie it to repent, to repent and turn away from their self, turn away from their God, ungodly ways, turn away from their own, uh, whatever they put in place of God, that they get it out and put Jesus back in first in rank first in power, first in authority in their life, and then asking God for his transforming power to start making a change for them to recover what has already been lost. I hope you got something out of this word today because God gave me this word to remind us that we need to be steadfast. And that's the other scripture you want to look at. Let's turn, that's my last scripture. I know I'm getting ahead of myself because I'm getting excited, but I'm hoping you're getting excited too. You can't give up. <laughs> you got to stay focused. Glory to God. And we know what? The prize is at the end. The ultimate prize is at the end. We get benefits and blessings along the way, but don't, think, don't confuse them with the ultimate prize at the end. The ultimate prize at the end is eternal life. 
is living in the new heaven, in the new earth, glory to God, amen, and living in a new body, glory to God, so don't get it confused, some people just want the blessings, but they, I want it all, I want everything that God has promised us according to the word of faith, and not try to what, to abort what God is saying, we're talking about realigning one's focus, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, verse number 58, this is my last scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, 1 Corinthians 15 and 58, and we're going to end with this here. This is a good preaching, amen, right here on this 58 verse, because I can take this and work with this here. But it says here in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and 58 and 58. We're going to go to that 58th verse, and I'm going to stop there. This is for you and I as we bring uh, uh, close to this. And it says here, therefore, my beloved brethren, I'm reading out of Amplified. It says, be firm and steadfast, unmovable. In other words, don't flip-flop from faith to fear all the time. Yes, we do that when we're growing up. And once you, you're locked in on him being your Lord and your, your Savior and your Lord, because some people just locked on him being Savior, because Savior means we get a lot of forgiveness. A Lord means you now have to do something that you got to do in terms of him being Lord over your life because he respects, he challenges you to do things. Now, listen, it says here, it said, therefore, my beloved brother, be firm, steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Then it says, always being superior, superior, excelling. Then it says, doing more than enough in the service of the Lord. And then it says here, knowing and being continually aware that your labor the labor in the Lord is not futile, it never wasted or to no purpose. So we're not wasting our time, we're investing our time. <laughs> Hallelujah, glory to God. Yeah, yeah. I'm not when I give, I'm not wasting my money. I'm investing in glory to God. Amen. Amen. When I do my behavior is right in alignment with what God says according to the fruits of the Spirit. I, I, I'm not losing, I'm gaining. What do you mean gaining? I'm gaining because what? He rewards those who faithfully, amen, obey him according to the word of faith, not out of legalism, but out of love and relationship for who he is. I love him so much. I know many of you do too, that I've come too far to turn around. I, I need to continue on. I'm, there was a time my hair was jet black, but it's gray now, and I'm not going to get act foolish and lose out on what he promised me in terms of what he's doing now and what he's going to do even when I take my last breath. Glory to God. And when you take your last breath, I need him to take me all the way. Glory to God. So I hope you got something, a word of faith today, something that will encourage you, build your faith up, and help you to do a little spring cleaning for yourself, glory to God, and, and check and make sure that you're realigning one's focus when it's needed so we don't lose focus on him being first in rank, first in power, first in authority over our life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this word of faith today. What a word, what a word, what a word. We thank you so much for a word that's designed to bring correction, to bring even now uh, adjustments if necessary, a word that will even remind us uh, what is required for us still, because you haven't changed your mind. We pray that you bless those who are, are listening for the first time. If there's someone who hasn't received Jesus as not only their Savior and their Lord, we pray that you give them a faith to receive you as your Lord and their Savior, God. And Father, if they're really serious about it, they can just do what they need to do, talk to the right people who they've come in contact with, or even email us or let us know what they need so we can give them the right information so they can be applied in that alignment and relationship with you. So, Lord, we thank you so much for all that you've said and done through this vessel of clay today. Thank you even now. You said one plant, one water. Now, Lord, give increase. And we thank you for everything we allowed us to say and do today. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we pray. We say amen, 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 and amen. Listen, this week you're going to experience supernatural, unexplainable events are going to take place in your life this week because I said so in Jesus' name. I'm speaking a word of faith over you. I'm declaring that these things are going to be so. You, your response said, I re your response should be, I receive it in Jesus' name. Don't worry about how it's going to be done. That's God's part. 
He knows how to do that. Listen, don't forget to show your appreciation by helping us getting the word of faith out. Amen. Go to our website, www.kficc.com. Look for the donate button and help us get the word of faith out. We thank you for your financial support. Thank you for your prayers. Listen, come back next week. We got some more word for you. And I believe it's going to help you as we continue to move forward by faith and not by sight alone. This we pray and thank you even now in advance. Now have a great week and we'll talk to you soon. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God.